I want to talk to you about power. Power as promised by Jesus Christ. Now, when you think about the type of church that Jesus is building, what comes to your mind? Many times when we look at the pictures we see, not pictures like pictures, but when you look at the change in expression in many places, sometimes you feel like maybe we are not being the church as Jesus intended the church to be. But the good news is that Jesus declared that he was building his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So what type of church, what kind of church is Jesus building? Let me suggest that he is building a triumphant church. One that is holy, full of the Holy Spirit and doing great exploits. That's the church he's building. It's not an anemic church, one that is worldly, powerless and defeated. It is triumphant because Jesus calls his own more than conquerors. He's building a fruitful church whose food is to go about bringing deliverance, healing to all those who are oppressed by the devil. See, the same thing that Jesus did. He went about doing good and healing everyone who was oppressed of the devil. And the church he is building goes about doing the same. So, so this church is not preoccupied with fun and entertainment. It's sad when entertainment and fun become the dominant factor. But I think it should be the power of the Holy Spirit moving through human beings, bringing deliverance to the dying and to the captives. That is the type of church Jesus is building. Jesus is building a spirit-filled church, one that preaches the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Now, it is always sad when we try to replace the Holy Spirit work with some kind of spiritual show that only entertains people but leaves them still thirsty, robbed and still chained by Satan's power. But the church Jesus is building is full of the Holy Spirit. The church that Jesus is building is empowered to go bring in the harvest. It is empowered to set people free. It goes out to make a difference in people's lives. The church that is building is empowered to grow itself to full maturity. And the Holy Spirit wants to come upon your life today. The Lord's desire is that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, a true Spirit-filled believer will demonstrate reverence for God and will demonstrate spiritual power in such a way that the captives are set free, the church is edified, and Jesus Christ is glorified in the process. So what picture do you have in mind of the type of church Jesus is building? And are you the type of believer that Jesus intends you to be? Because he wants you full of the Holy Spirit. He wants you to be on fire for God. He wants you to manifest spiritual gifts and to work the works of God in these last days. Now, let me zero in on the aspect of power. I'm really zeroing in on the words of Jesus. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, we have these words. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now let's just look at that verse. He says you will receive power. The emphasis there is receiving power. And this will happen when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So this is not something you make up. The Holy Spirit comes upon you. And when he does, you receive power to be witnesses. And you go about working the works of God wherever he leads you and sends you. Now the primary purpose 
of the baptism with the Holy Spirit or in the Holy Spirit is the receiving of power to witness for Christ so that the lost will be won over to him and taught to obey the commands of Christ. So it's not for entertainment, it's not for a show, it is for touching lives, bringing them out of darkness and leading them to live a life of obedience where they grow to become like Jesus. The Holy Spirit was going to come upon those early church people and he is still coming upon us to enable us as his disciples to work the works of God through the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. See, you are being called to demonstrate God's power, to work the works of God. God wants to work through your life by his Spirit. He wants you so empowered that people can experience God's miracle power working through your life. Now let's do a little word study. The word power, as is used in this verse, is dunamis. It is talking about power in action, power in operation. So this is a power that manifests to go and work the works of God. It's not just power you know, to have fun, but it's power to work the works of God, power to do the mission of God. Now you agree with me that the mission God gave the church is not a small task. It cannot be done by human power, human ability. It cannot be done just by machinery and better equipment, better knowledge, better style, better methods. But it can only be done by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I can submit humbly today, I think the greatest need of the church today is not more money, not more better method, but it is the power of the Holy Spirit at work in the church and through the church. Now, how do you receive the Holy Spirit? Simple. Ask in faith. Go in a place of prayer and ask the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Ask that the Holy Spirit comes on you, and comes upon you. Ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit and God is going to fill you with the Spirit. As a matter of fact, believers need to live lives that are continually filled with the Holy Spirit. And as we are filled with the Holy Spirit, there is a demonstration, there is an enablement that comes in where spiritual gifts manifest. And one of the, the constant manifestations we see in the book of Acts is that those who are filled with the Holy Spirit spoke in other tongues. But we know they didn't end there. They went on to manifest spiritual gifts that are highlighted in the book of First Corinthians. And we see other aspects of gifts of the Spirit working through the church as they have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. So ask in faith. Then expect and act. Expect the Holy Spirit to come upon you, to fill you, and to enable you to manifest mighty power. Ask, believe, expect God to fill you. You see, you are not just praying dead prayers. You are praying prayers where you want God's power to come on you. You want to be on fire for God. It's a biblical account, like I alluded to, show that as they were filled with the Holy Spirit, there was a manifestation. They spoke in other tongues. Then others prophesied. They praised God. There was a manifestation. There was an enablement that came. And God is going to enable you and empower you today. So as you think about the type of church Jesus is building, you want to be one of those that make up that church. You want to be full of the Holy Spirit and demonstrating God's power by going and working the works of God.